today's maths class. I hope you are all fine at home. Stay safe and happy always. In today's maths class, we will be discussing about the topic playing with numbers chapter number 3. In this chapter, we have got some important topics like factors, multiples, HCF, LCM, divisibility of numbers, etc. First of all, let's start with the topic factors. What do you mean by factors? Have you heard this word before? I think you have heard this word before in 5th standard. Still, we will be just recollecting the meaning of factors. Let's start with an example. If you want to find the factors of the number 4, what will we do? We will just think about two numbers. But we cannot think about any two numbers. We have to select two numbers in such a way that when we find the product of those two numbers, it should be 4. What are the possibilities of getting 4 as a product of two numbers? Yes, you are right. If you take 2 times 2, it is 4. There is one more possibility, I think. Yes, 1 times 4 is also 4. So we have got 2 times 2 equal to 4 and 1 times 4 equal to 4. So we can say that the factors of 4 are 1, 2 and 4. Let's go for another example. Let's take the number 12. How do you find the factors of 12? Yes. Let's check the possibility of getting 12 as a product of two numbers. Which are the possibilities? Yes. The first possibility is 1 times 12 itself. What can be the second one? 4 times 3. Correct. What can be the next one? 2 times 6. Of course it is correct. Do you have any other possibility to get 12 as a product of two numbers? We don't have. So shall we arrange the numbers in order as a factors of 12? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 are the factors of 12. Shall we go for some more examples for finding factors of certain numbers? Let's take another example. Let it be 10. What are the possibilities of getting 10 as a product of two numbers? Yes, it is 1 times 10 and then 2 times 5. So, when we are taking the factors of certain number, we have to arrange them in ascending order. So, let's arrange the factors as 1, 2, 5 and 10. Shall we go for one more example? Let's take the number 6. What are the possibilities to get 6 as a product of two numbers? 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. So shall we arrange the factors? Which are the factors? 1, 2, 3 and 6. Let's take another set of numbers. Let's take the number 3. How many factors do you get for the number 3? Yes, we have only two factors for 3. Which are they? They are 1 and 3. Let's take another example. Say 5. How many factors do you get for the number 5? Again, we have only two factors. 1 and 5. What about 7? Number 7 also has got only two factors, 1 and 7. So we have two types of numbers based on the number of factors. They are prime numbers and composite numbers. What can be the meaning of prime numbers? Prime numbers means the numbers which have got only two factors and composite numbers are the numbers which have more than two factors. So we had examples like 3, 5, 7 etc. for prime numbers and for composite numbers we have examples like 6, 10, 
15, 12, etc. Now, let's talk about multiples. To get the multiples of a certain number, we have to multiply that number with the natural numbers. For example, let's take a number 5. If we want to obtain the multiples of number 5, we have to multiply 5 with natural numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So just check. What is 5 times 1? It is 5. So 5 is a multiple. 5 times 2? 10. It's another multiple. 5 times 3? 15. It is the third multiple of 5. 5 times 4? It's 20. It is another multiple of 5. Just like this, you can continue writing the multiples of 5 as long as you are multiplying it with the natural numbers. Shall we take one more example? Let's write the first 5 multiples of 8. Which are they? They are 8, 16, 24, 32 and 40. If you want to write the first 5 multiples of 9, what will you write? Yes, they are 9, 18, 27, 36 and 45. So, let's do the exercise questions in the textbook based on these topics. The next topic in this chapter is tests for divisibility of numbers. Here are some easy techniques to identify whether a given number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 and 11. If a number has 0 in the 1's place, then it is divisible by 10. For example, the numbers like 100, 1000, 7010, 60, etc. have got 0 in their 1's place. So, all these numbers can be divided by 10. Now, let's check the divisibility condition for 5. A number which has either 0 or 5 in its 1's place is divisible by 5. So, is 2410 divisible by 5? Yes, because it has got 0 in its 1's place. What about 24? Is it divisible by 5? No, because 24 has 4 in its 1's place. Next, let's check the divisibility test for 2. A number is divisible by 2 if it has got 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8 in its 1's place. That means all the even numbers are divisible by 2. For example, the numbers like 36, 54, 32, 48 etc. are divisible by 2. Let's check the divisibility test for 3. If the sum of the digits is a multiple of 3 in a number, then that number is divisible by 3. What does it mean? Let's take one example. Is 7221 divisible by 3? To check that, we have to add the digits in that given number. 7 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. What is the sum of the digits? It's 12. Is 12 divisible by 3? Yes. That means the number 7221 is also divisible by 3. Let's take another example. 260. Is that number divisible by 3? How do we check it? Let's take the sum of the digits. 2 plus 6 plus 0. What is the sum of its digits? It's 8. Is 8 divisible by 3? No. That means the number 
260 is also not divisible by 3. How do we check the divisibility by 6? If a number is divisible by 2 and 3 both, then it is divisible by 6 also. Let's take an example 36. Is 36 divisible by 2? Yes, it is. What about its divisibility by 3? It is divisible by 3 also. That means the number 36 is divisible by 6. Now, let's check the divisibility by 9. If the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 9, then the number itself is divisible by 9. For example, the number 5283, the sum of the digits is 5 plus 2 plus 8 plus 3, that's equal to 18. Is 18 divisible by 9? Yes. Then the given number is also divisible by 9. If you take another example, 758, in that number, the sum of the digits is 7 plus 5 plus 8, which is 20. But 20 is not divisible by 9. So, the given number 758 is not divisible by 9. Next, let's check the divisibility by 11. To check the divisibility of a number by 11, the rule is, find the difference between the sum of the digit at odd places from the right and the sum of the digits at even places from the right of the number. If the difference is either 0 or divisible by 11, then the number is divisible by 11. Let's check this rule by an example. Let's take the number 61809. Sum of the digits at odd places from the right is 9 plus 8 plus 6, which is 23. Now let's take the sum of the digits at even places from the right. It is 0 plus 1, which is 1. Now let's find their difference. That is 23 minus 1 is equal to 22. Is 22 divisible by 11? Yes. That means 61,809 is also divisible by 11. If you take another example, like 308, the sum of the digits at odd places from the right is 8 plus 3 equal to 11 and the sum of the digits at even places from the right is 0. What is the difference? 11 minus 0 is equal to 11. Since 11 is divisible by 11, the number 308 is also divisible by 11. I hope you have understood the topics which were discussed in this class. Please do the questions from the exercise in the textbook. That's all for today. Thank you.